Visit your local bait shop and the fishing lure selection will look something like this. From spoons to jigs, plugs to plastic body baits, you'll find a collection of finely tuned and machined fishing tackle. You won't see any wood carved, hand painted baits here. The only way to see a wide selection of classic fishing lures is to go to a collector, a collector like Mark Martin. Mark created a collection so big he had to build a room in his house with custom wood cases to hold them all. He didn't start out with great ambitions, just a few lures here and there, but soon it took on a life of its own. I started in our old house that we used to live in and I just started hanging them on a little piece of trim around the top of the den and then when I got one row complete I started the second one and when I moved here I built that room for my lure collection. It's unusual to see that many lures in one place and displayed and uh, most of the guys who fish, you know, they immediately zero in on a bunch of lures that they've used in their life. And, uh, but women think they're beautiful. I mean, they just think they're very artistic and they're pretty impressed with them too. One of the coolest things that you can do is go to a garage sale and find something like this. This is a tackle box I got. I opened it and I saw the, all the lures in boxes and I immediately made them a, an offer and they accepted it. And I had no idea what was under it, but it turns out that some reels that I had been wanting for a long time were inside these Fluger Summit reels, which they're, they're like brand new in the box, in the bag, with the tools. And these are some of the most well-made reels. This reel was made from, I believe, 1903 to 1910. This is my favorite part of my lure collection. Uh, all, the, all the lures on the glass shelves are Bud Stewart lures, and he lived in Fenton, Michigan most of his life. That's where he had his business, and he hand carved these lures, hand painted every one of them. Uh, he's very famous for these little dots that he put inside of other dots with repelling paints to create these interesting designs on everything. And I've tried to uh, collect lures that are signed by him. This one he actually signed twice. I think he signed it once and then found out he had to put the hook there and signed it again. So that's kind of different. Uh, the oldest lures that I have of his, this is one of his lures that he made in 1930 and one of his first lures, hand carved, and it still has the rubber inner tube tail on it. Uh, he's, he's in the Smithsonian Institute. He's just a really iconic lure carver and he did some really interesting things. Over on this end there's a um, red-winged blackbird, a crippled red-winged blackbird that he only made about four of those. And uh, that's a, a very unusual lure. He made turtles and muskrats and ducks and all kinds of things for musky fishing. These lures on these two rows are called Devon lures and like this one has, it's made of little stacks of leather. This one is actually sewn uh, into a little shape of a fish with leather. Some of these are actually just turn of the century from the very, very early 1900s. So this cabinet right here is all, almost all Hedden uh, lures and, and I specifically enjoy the crazy crawlers and the tad polys. And then the crazy crawlers with the wings, um, Hedden bought a patent from another gentleman that was making this and, and his name was Jim Donnelly and he called them the Donnelly Wows and there are very few of them in here that have Donnelly hardware that they purchased from him that was different than their own. And uh, so those are even more rare because they didn't get much of his hardware. But these are topwater lures that when you jerk them across the water they splash with those wings and that's a bass lure. Uh, there are a few in here that are quite unique. These three are not, are the only ones here that are not headings, and these are Kentucky bass birds, but they were advertised at, on eBay as airplane lures and didn't have any description of Kentucky Bait Company or anything, so I got them really inexpensively because they weren't, they didn't know what they were selling, so that's always a good thing. This is kind of my workbench area, just the lures that I've gathered and I'm not sure what I'm doing with yet or whatever. There's some, some, some unique things here too. There's like, this is called a mercury minnow and it actually has a little, you can actually see it in there, a little, some little beads of mercury in it to help it wobble when it, um, when, when you're pulling the lure through the water. Now this right here, this is another Bud Stewart. This is actually a muskrat pike decoy 
and it actually has real muskrat fur on it. I just haven't gotten it over there in the in the uh, Bud Stewart area, but it's got a funny little face on him and little eyebrows and stuff. So it's pretty 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 cute little lure. Now these are real old poppers, uh, handmade, hand painted. Um, you used to be able to get a dozen of these in a, at, at a time out of a tackle box, and now they're sold individually online for a lot more than the whole dozen would have cost 20 years ago. Mark's not just a collector, he's a fisherman and a family man. He practically raised his family on Lake Michigan and has proof that he can not only collect lures, but use them to catch fish so big, well, you might just be tempted to kiss them. When he's not collecting, fishing, or building custom cabinets as his trade, he's creating some really amazing custom painted tiles he frames and sells at outdoor fairs. Yep, Mark is a busy man, working, fishing, and building an impressive collection of classic lures. But more importantly, he and his family have collected memories that will last a lifetime in Michigan's Out of Doors.